Hello, my name is Don Scheneker. I am the product marketing engineer for the USB protocol analyzer from Agilent Technologies. Today I'd like to introduce you to the U4611A USB protocol analyzer. I'm going to demonstrate the analyzer here which I have set up with a USB 3.0 thumb drive plugged into it. It's connected back here to a laptop PC that I'm using for demonstration. What I'm going to demonstrate is the ease of use for doing a data capture of USB 3.0, looking into the data, triggering on an event, and saving that information away. When I first launch the analyzer software, what I see is it automatically discovers my unit, will show me by clicking on the green icon over here, everything that's enabled and what my versions are. The software automatically keeps everything in sync for my software version and the firmware within the analyzer itself. If I double click on the unit, it opens up into the detailed analysis mode. In the first part here, there's a series of icons on the left hand side where first I configure my device, my analyzer operation. My stop mode is trigger condition, which the buffer is being used in a circular fashion, continuously capture until I find that trigger condition. Or I can choose a stop when full or a manual mode of stop. If I say trigger condition, I then can control the trigger of what do I want in the capture buffer. Do I want most of the data before the trigger or after the trigger? So I'm going to set it at about 90%. This is what I typically find most valuable. Next, I see my buffer size is a 9 gigabyte capture buffer. I can have an 18 gigabyte capture buffer or all the way down to a 2 gigabyte. Either way that fits best for you. When I have a 9 gigabyte, I also have control of how much do I actually want to use in this particular capture. Using that 9 gigabyte, I can also segment that capture buffer so I can do a multiple capture on one run, up to 256. That allows me to use this trigger condition repeatedly to find that condition, not once, but up to 256 times in one run and save that away in my operation. I'm going to set that back to one capture segment using nine gigabytes, all the information. Then there, I go back over here and what do I want to capture? I go to my filter conditions. Right now I'm set to capture USB 3.0 only. And I can select, do I want to capture the LFPS signaling? Do I want to capture idle conditions? What about link commands? Ping responses, isochronous, things like that. I have the ability to simply, if I want to capture those, I just simply check those boxes and the filter is set to capture. So here I am set to capture everything except the idle condition. That easy. Then I can also control, do I capture for all the devices and all the endpoints? And I can clip the packets to say, I only want the first 20 bytes of a data packet. Easy control of my filtering conditions. The next thing is my trigger condition. Since I'm capturing till a trigger condition, here's how I set up my triggers. There's different packet types all predefined within my analyzer here. So if I wanted to capture on or trigger on acknowledgements, USB acknowledgements, I can search for it by typing in upper part. It brings up everything that has an ACK in it, including packets and my transaction packet acknowledgement. I select that, drag it over, drop it, and it automatically sets my filter condition or my trigger condition. By default, I am going to trigger on that condition, but I can easily do things of like, I want to count these events or do a count per second, and it creates a counter that, that's going to keep track of that for me. Now I go on to the next step here, my status. Here's my capture buffer. When I start the capture, it's showing me what's happening across the link. Here's my buffer being filled with, with the activity that, that's occurring there. I also see the status of all the LEDs from the front panel. So I can see that super speed link is active. Periodically there are some packets, power's up, everything's looking good. For this demonstration, I'm going to now go into a copy file. I have a little batch file that's going to copy files back and forth for me to generate some traffic. I double click on that routine, it's copying a file back and forth from my thumb drive to the hard drive and back again. So now when I look, I see data is flowing a little bit faster in here and I can see that there's continuous packets. The information is being stored in the buffer, 
how much current is my device using, what's the voltage level, things like that. As soon as I hit a trigger condition, by pressing a manual trigger that's on the front of the unit, I, it automatically marks. The trigger condition happened. Now I'm doing my post trigger capture and that information is being stored in, in the capture buffer. As soon as it gets that final 10%, it will stop and goes into the decode for me. Across the bottom, I have a complete view of everything that's in my capture buffer. Here's data packets from the host, data packets from the device, and the acknowledgements, not ready commands, some of the different things that are being sent back and forth across the buffer. I can see exactly where the trigger condition happened and it immediately took me to that location in my capture buffer. In this decode view, this spreadsheet, what I'm seeing is everything that occurred across the link. The acknowledgements, the link management of link good, the skips, um, the uh, data packets, everything's brought in for me right there. Let me maximize this window so I can see a little bit more. When I click on a data packet, it automatically gives me a detailed decode of bit by bit what's in that capture buffer. What's the value of the res reserved field? What's the value of the CRC? Everything's decoded for me so I can see complete details. I have multiple decode views here. This is called the spreadsheet view in that there's one line for every packet that occurs across that link. But I can select the protocol view which gives me the details. So now when I look at that data packet, I can expand that and see bit by bit what occurred across that link, including looking at it in binary form or the KD codes. Everything can be displayed for me in whatever format that I desire to look at it. If I go back to the spreadsheet view, it's simply clicked. All of my views are synchronized together. If I want to look at what that data packet was part of, I can go over to the transaction view. We can see that it was a write command, a SCSI write command, that the command successfully passed. Now that write command was actually made up of multiple packets underneath. You can see the command block wrapper, which is decoded in detail in the detail window on the right hand side and I can see all the parts in there including the logical block address and information there. But I can see all the other commands or, or the data packets that carry that information across the link. It was a total of uh, 10 K bytes was sent across this link. But I can see all of the, the bytes and bits that were sent across this, including periodically there's some end device readies as, as the USB managed the link for its operation. And I can collapse all those down to see write command after write command. What I can see is the detail of each command here, but in the lower part I can measure the particular information, including zooming in for more detail. There's a smart zoom in so I can see what was the flow of information like. Whenever I see a gap, I can easily put in bookmarks that mark X and O and I can see the time difference between those points. All the information is time stamped down to two nanoseconds in the information that is stored away. And when I look at the decode, what I see is this particular packet occurred 57 seconds after I started, but if I want to see the delta time, it's a simple selection of there was one millisecond between each one of those write commands. And I can see that over and over again and make any of the measurements that I want in the operation. If I go back to the spreadsheet view, if I captured more information than I want, wanted to see, I use the quick filters up here, including I see lots of skips, let's filter those out. I click on that that fast. It's able to filter down and give me the information that I'm interested in. Link good, link credits, I don't want to see those right now. Filter those out. How about the link up, link downs? Filter down is extremely fast response and that is part of the client server operation and the information is stored in an 18 gigabyte or 9 gigabyte in this case capture buffer and I'm accessing the pieces of information that I want for immediate responsiveness. So there's some quick filters available for you here. There's additional controls of being able to set and mark, bookmark certain events in there, being able to set your device types, whether it's a USB uh, mass storage device or a HID device or some other types of device. We support custom decoding of information. 
You can do advanced searching that allows you to search for events that are related in time from one event to the other. So a lot of different capability in your post-process operation. After I've done the capture, I can simply save the information away, file save, and I can save that information in multiple formats, XML format, or in a, a CSV format, or as binary that I can decode with, with other tools as I need to. I'm not going to save this information, but I'm going to jump back and show you one other additional feature. When I close my decode window, I can still see the information is in my capture buffer. If I wanted to do a new trigger condition, I simply go over to trigger, and I can look at the information of, for this acknowledgement, count the, these packets is what I have set up. When I start the run, down here is my counter that's triggering on these events and saving that information away. That trigger condition can be an extremely complex operation. If I go back to the trigger condition, I just want to show you of here I'm looking for an acknowledgement. Let's remove that and do something different. Let's grab a data packet. And when I get the data packet, in there I want to branch to a new state. Notice it has state one here, waiting for a data packet. In state two, I'm triggering on the acknowledgement. In, with that acknowledgement, I can also add a timer condition and looking for the time between specific events in the operation. And when I have a timeout of 10 microseconds of not getting an acknowledgement, that becomes my trigger condition. So extremely powerful and complex, allowing you to zoom in to the information that you want very, very quickly and get into the USB analysis that you need. So you've seen how to use the USB protocol analyzer from Agilent Technologies to help you achieve your best designs for your USB operations. Go to the URL below at Agilent for more information or contact your Agilent sales representative for an on-site demonstration and evaluation. Thank you.